All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, first things I want to talk about are kind of where rates are, what's happening with rates, and what the heck happened last week. It was probably the worst week we've ever seen. Well, let me rephrase that. The worst week we have seen in probably a year um, in regards to how volatile the markets were. So the first thing I'm going to do is share my screen to kind of show you what happened, and we're going to talk about why, and then we're going to talk about what we can do to um, to really focus on our customers and how to how to explain to them what's happening and what eliminate try to eliminate the fears associated with potentially raising rights rates. Let me put this on mute so I can put that away. All right, so this is the the bond market in the last, let's just say last month. This last week and a half, two weeks, you can see this bond deterioration. And then on Friday and Thursday and Friday, we saw a drop of over a hundred basis points uh, and, then, and then a bounce right back up. And then today we're kind of stuck. So we might have found a floor, um, let's call it floor of resistance, but rates are now in the th low threes. So we went from a 2.75 to 3.125, 3.25 in rates almost overnight. I mean, it was a two to three day shift um, in this big, this big drop we saw last week. It was just a, a waterfall. Um, so what, what do we expect? Well, today we're down another 20 basis points. We have an alert to lock that we issued, um, meaning that the rates when they were posted this morning, they're now a little bit worse by 20 basis points. So rates continue to show deterioration even after that bump upward. Now, um, I think we're going to see rates retreat or go up to where we were pre-COVID. The reason I think that is because right now the feds are spending money. That $1.9 trillion is passed. They're going to be spending money like it's going out of style. And keep in, keep in mind, there's already $1 trillion that's still there from the previous uh, stimulus that hasn't been used. So now we have basically three trillion in spending that's going to be pushed into the markets for the next however long it's going to take them to spend it. Um, that is going to cause two things. It's kind of like nitrous to a car's engine. It's going to really boost the markets. And if you watch the stock market today, uh, you can kind of see what's happening. We're up almost two percent, six hundred points on the stock market today. That's going to continue to push forward. Um, we had a very strong economy prior to moving forward here uh, with the COVID. So we're seeing now that the vaccines are out, we're seeing all of the markets kind of pushing back to normal. The biggest factor we need to really be afraid of, though, is inflation. Um, the cost to build homes right now is going through the roof. If you notice, and really keep an eye on these, if you have copy, copies of appraisals that you're getting, now you'll see the cost to build is actually more than the cost per the comp approach, the sales the approach. I'm looking for a stop eight. Um. So you'll see that you're a lot of, that cost to build is going up quite a bit. So that, that type of inflation, inflation on the wood is gonna continue to drive prices higher as well. Um, so if everyone thinks we're in a bubble, um, I don't think that this rate bump will be much of a Hindrance, it's going to just make people upset. And the reason I say that, I think if you go back to March, where we were, if you go back to before COVID hit, we were at a point, if I can show, draw a line, where we're at now versus where we were before COVID, our rates were going, getting, the bond market was getting uh, better. And then COVID hit and we saw this craziness. And then it kind of got better, 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 better. So, I think we're going to stay in the, the mid to high threes is where we're going to end up. So setting proper expectations with our buyers on what the markets are doing is going to be very important. Um, this whole COVID year has been a blessing for a lot of people. But we so just wanted to share that with you guys real quick. If you guys are on the call and are not muted, could you mute yourselves? I'm trying to find whoever's not muted. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Um, so as, as far as the, um, the actual rates, expect rates in the higher threes by, I would say, summertime. The only thing that's going to bring rates back down 
is a correction of the stock market. Now, I think for that to happen, we're going to see, we're going to have to see um, the stimulus money kind of wear off. And then usually when there's this big stimulus and the money's out there, it's going to hit for a while. People are going to get drunk on it, be very happy with it. And then there's going to be a hangover, <laughs> so to speak, in the financial world where they realize, oh, okay, that, that, was, that was fun, but now we're back to reality. Um, and then usually after a big stimulus like this, usually there's a little bit of a recession, which is actually good news for interest rates. So I think 2022, we're going to see interest rates come back down. So there will be opportunity to refinance. But I do believe through this year, we're going to see rates in the high to mid threes as we move forward. If it comes down lower, I will be surprised, but I will be very, very happy. Um, but I don't foresee that happening. Um, now, some changes to let you guys know, there are some big jumbo um, rollouts that are going to be happening um, in the near future. So you're going to see some more jumbo products hitting the shelf, so to speak, with lenders that are going to be a little bit more aggressive. So that's exciting news. And as of today, we no longer have a four-page loan application. Um, the government's updated version is now eight pages. So um, just more paperwork for customers to have to sign. And uh, it's, it's just goofy. So um, it's really hard to understand for customers. There's a lot of redundancy in it, but you'll start to see those new paperwork, the new paperwork for the loan application roll out. Uh, soon, March 1st, as of today, is the first day that that is actually rolled out. Um, so as far as rates, that's kind of what's happening right now with interest rates. Uh, why the longer application? Well, the government wants more information, basically. They want to be able to track people, track everything about people. Um, there's a lot more questions. It goes a little deeper into your ethnicity. It goes a little deeper into um, marital um, status. It goes a lot, a lot deeper into um, just the basics of where you've worked on uh, numerous factors. So it's just more information, the same stuff, but just more information on it. Um, it's just frustrating that it continues to get longer and longer and longer and longer, but there's nothing we can really do about that. So, but that is a part of it. Um, any questions on the rates that's happening right now? Um, one thing I want to really focus on is make, making sure you're calling uh, your buyers um, we're going to be reaching out. We send alerts out as well to buyers, letting them know what exactly is happening with the markets to get kind of re pre approved or kind of re look at the numbers. Because for every 1% in interest rate, it's about $50,000 in buying power. <clears throat> and that's between the three to 600 range. It uh, gets a little bit skewed as you go higher as well. Um, and obviously, it's more dramatic as you go higher in purchase price. But it is important to make sure that with the rates going up, that we do act quickly. And um, we set proper expectations on this. Um, now, how do we overcome the fears of buyers with rates? And really we've been living in a pipe dream for the last year. Uh, rates really weren't supposed to be the way they were. Um, they, they were artificially low and lower than anyone's ever seen. So that was kind of like, all right, we've had our dessert before dinner. Now we have to sit down and kind of stomach down the rest of the meal um, because we've all, had a very good run for the last year, but it's not going to last. And we just need to know that rates in the threes are still phenomenal. I mean, they're still very, very, very good. Um, we just need to make sure we're, we're letting our customers know that it's going to stay around this rate and uh, really let them understand the reality behind what's driving our housing market right now. Um, you might've heard my analogy that this whole world has been kind of like a giant anthill um, that was really fine-tuned and well-structured. And then COVID came and it was the big bully that kicked the anthill. And now the whole United States is a bunch of ants running around trying to find their homes again. That's kind of how it is with buyers around the country. We're all trying to, they're all trying to figure out and settle down into place. Once that happens, I think we're about a year out uh, because there's still a lot of people relocating. There's a lot of companies that are changing their philosophy on working from home. I think that's gonna last about a year. Guys, people are going to continue to be driven to this market. They're going to be continue to be driven to the, the Tennessees, the Texas, the Arizona, the Florida. Um, so we're going to continue to see markets rising in, in values because of that. And because of the cost of goods to build a home and the lack of inventory, that will continue to drive prices higher. Rates may have a little bit of impact on some people, but unfortunately, it's going to be the lower end. 
um, which is a very difficult party part or place right now for those individuals because it's hard for them to compete anyhow. So you're going to see another year, I believe, of a good push in the values of properties, even though rates are going up, it's still very low. And then we're going to see that slow down. And then those people, once it slowed down, that were pushed to the sidelines, they're kind of in the, in the dugout, not playing right now, they're going to enter back into it once we have less competition out there. But right now, guys, you see it. It's insane. We're seeing every offer have multiple offers way over asking. Um, so I feel really bad for first time home buyers, but they're going to have to probably sit on the sidelines until that slows down, until everyone gets settled back into what the normal is. And then we're going to see them enter back into the marketplace. So be thinking in the future of how you can reach out to those first time home buyers. The uh, first time home buyer program will be coming out as well. I don't know when. It's part of the whole plan of the, the 1.9 trillion package. So expect that in the near future as well. All right. Any questions on today's Monday update? Don't be shy. Are there any lending guidelines getting stricter? Nope. Uh, guidelines are not getting stricter. Um, that's pretty wide open right now as far as the guidelines are the same. Um, Jumbo is getting a little bit less strict. They're going to be really uh, getting a little bit more aggressive now that the values have come up. I've actually seen some people really scratch their head and pull out of the market the last three months. And now they're entering back in. That's why you'll see more jumbo because they didn't know what was going to happen. They didn't know if this was just a, a bubble. But uh, guys, it can't be a bubble if there's more supply or there's, there's more demand than supply. It just can't. If you look at every bubble that's ever happened, the reason was there's too many homes and not enough buyers. So you have to lower your price to sell them. People have equity, a lot of equity. If there's foreclosures, they're just going to sell. They are not going to just let their house go because everyone has equity right now. We've had a really good run. It's going to be a good run for another year at least. So those people that may foreclose, yeah, you might see some people in dire straits. I've seen a couple where the house, they tried to fix it themselves and like build it themselves and they ran out of money. And now they don't have any, there's no mortgage for that because it's, it's already half built and no lender will come in and redo that and they can't qualify for a mortgage. That kind of stuff is going to be out there, but that's going to just be a normal opportunity. But any type of foreclosure boom, it's not in the cards. It just won't work. It just, it can't. It's just not going to happen because there's just too much equity. And if those homes do hit the market, you and I'll be actually very happy because that means more inventory for our buyers because we're all looking for homes to buy. <laughs> all of our buyers are struggling. It's hard. So we're just continuing to roll up our sleeves, but we need to set proper expectations about what rates are doing and how that's going to impact them moving forward. Um, as it takes, if they have that unicorn that they're looking for, we have to make sure that they know that, okay, I know that it, you want a 80 foot lap pool in the backyard, but there's only like eight in the whole country. And, uh, we may have to build that and you may have to wait a while to get that house. And if you do, that means rates may be higher. So are you, are you ready for that? Um, because sometimes if you set expectations on what's going to happen, they may say, you know what, maybe that is too much of a dream. This is fine for us. I think we'll be okay with this house. Um, obviously nobody likes to settle, but some people are just, they have these, these rainbows and unicorn ideas of what they can get in this market. And sometimes it's not reality. So, um, I'm always here to help with the bid over ask tool that we have uh, with the neighborhood uh, update as far as what the neighborhood's going to be projected for um, future values in the next one, two, three, four, and five years. It's a really good report. So if you guys need any of that ammunition to help with your buyers, uh, by all means, let me know and we can run that for you. Sean, I have a question. Yes. Um, so I have a client who's um, having a house built and it's taking over a year. Um, it's probably going to be done sometime in maybe August. Uh, at what point can you uh, lock interest rates? Um, and I mean, it's kind of a, like, who knows what it's going to be by August, right? Yeah. So there's, there's uh, really two things you need to be wary of, uh, not wary of, but think of. Ask the builder if they have a long-term lock policy. Basically what long-term locks, and this is over 120 days, uh, you have to pay something upfront to securitize that lock. Because basically what a lender is doing, the lender has to deliver that loan that's locked at the future date and the lender gets charged whatever rate is in the future. 
So if you lock with the loan, lock with the lender at 3.25 and the rates go to 3.875 after you locked, that lender has to pay the difference in that. I don't know if you guys remember, but um, I'll get back to that in a second, but there's a big issue that happened when COVID hit with rates moving dramatically and some lenders had to pay $100 million for just one day of loss. It was crazy. Um, but um, essentially you have to prepay for whatever that hedge is that they predict based on where rates are going to go up front. So you may have one or two points that you have to pay up front to secure that rate if that lender even allows that. It's very expensive to do that. Um, I would so what say- is, What is the normal lock um, time frame then? Um, there's 15, 30, 45, and 60, 75, and 90. That's usually the most that lenders allow before there's some sort of uh, extended price. And the shorter the term, the better the rate. So if you, as an example, if you did a 90 day lock today, it's about one point, one discount point more expensive than a 15 day lock. Because again, we're hedging that of what the future would be. Um, Cause if I locked a loan right now at 3.125 and rates went to 3.875 by the time we close and we deliver that to Fannie Mae at 3.125, they're going to say, okay, where's our money? You owe us more because now the rates are this. So the longer the lock, the more expensive it is. And that's because they have to hedge. Um, so that's really I, fascinating. Thank you for yeah, explaining yeah. that. That's really interesting. Yeah, it's, it's expensive. It's a dangerous world, the rate world. <laughs> um, that's why um, a lot of long-term locks aren't even allowed because if the rates go to five, that lender could be in a real world of trouble. Um, cause they have to guarantee that rate from the time they deliver that loan. Um, so that's, I feel really, really bad for the, a lot of the people that are buying new builds right now, because it is scary. Like, what is my rate going to be? Um, I do tell you that the mortgage industry is highly controlled. So if rates get out of control, the feds will purchase mortgage backed securities to drive them back down. I'm going to show you something real fast. I'm going to share the screen again. Share. All right. So see what happened over here on the left-hand side of this, um, this, this market. This is the, the bond market falling off the planet. It like, it fell all the way down here. Well, guess what? Why do you think rates went back up or the bond markets went back up? Why do you think that happened? It's the feds came in and bought in one day, a hundred billion in mortgage bonds. And then whoop, the bonds came back to life. So they're going to be careful because they're spending a lot of money. But if, if we see a huge change in rates where it's going to cause a problem to the market, they will buy more mortgage-backed securities to bring that bond market back up to normal. Um, it's kind of a game. I mean, it's, it's scary to think that the government has that much control over what rates are, but they do. It's kind of a socialized world that we live in in the regards to the mortgage world. Everything's owned by the government and guaranteed by the government and run by the government. Um, and the private sector like us are the ones that um, feed it out to the customers. So. It's goofy, but um, it's the world we live in. So um, I believe that rates will be stable. I don't think it's going to be too dramatic. So I don't think they have too much to worry, but I think they will be higher. So just prep them for that. Make sure they understand what the payments would look like if rates went to 3.75 um, and set that expectation now so that 30 days prior to close, they don't panic and cancel and it's a big problem. Um, so Definitely good to set those expectations for worst case scenario now before it becomes a problem. But very good question, Valerie. Any other questions? Don't be shy. Any weird scenarios you guys have that you need a little insight on? I was just curious, Sean, about back to the new builds, about your opinion. I know that now we have builders that are have gone to auctioning lots. Yeah. And so with that, you know, 10 to 12 month build out time and a lot that's going to the highest bidder, do you see any concerns, you know, once you get to the finish line to close with appraising, et cetera? 
Well, builders are unique because they set their own micro economy. Um, they will just use the future sales and the previous sales as their own comps. Um, and uh, it's, it's very rare that we see homes on new builds come in below uh, what the actual purchase price is as far as appraised value. Um, but it, it may happen if they go really gonzo and kind of crazy on the upgrades. I mean, if they take every single upgrade and just maximize that to the, to the top as far as the, the most premier of everything, there could be issues. But um, most of the time, builders already have this in the back of their minds. And they, um, that's why they like to close everything on time because they have a, they have a very well-oiled machine so that that doesn't usually become an issue. Uh, if you look back on Aviano, and I'll use that as an example back in 2005, six and seven, they had the same type of thing. There was a lottery. It was crazy. Homes were going out of control. There was this one model that they had um, that was three levels, had this circular staircase up there and it was going for, up for upwards of a million dollars. And, and uh, they always appraised because they had future contracts showing that they had commitments to them that were closing as well. And they just, they, have, they create their own economy. So I doubt it'll be an issue, but you never know. Um, it just depends on how many upgrades they have. Hopefully that answered your question. Hey, Sean, Mike Hill here. Can I add a, can I add a comment here? Absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me about that. <clears throat> In light of new construction, I've been talking to a lot of builders here over the past uh, week and a half. And yeah, we do all know about the lottery system that, that some builders use and then, then others really set in on the first come first serve because they don't believe that um, home buyers, uh, clients should be penalized if they've done what a builder has asked to do. And then, you know, someone kind of comes in at the last minute on a lottery and then they just wipe that out. So we can kind of understand that with the frustration on both sides. Well, I'll tell you another thing that I just kind of like to learn that Taylor Morrison, when they're rolling out their product coming up in Story Rock, they're already considering pivoting to going away from, even though there are pre-registrations and a lottery, they're actually considering doing a, a, a highest and best offer for any offers for anybody who wants to be riding in Story Rock. And they have 96 lots that they have allocated. And they're only going to be uh, releasing about two to three lots just at the, at the start point, probably in about May. And I mean, if you do that math on that, that's four and a half years. Obviously, they're not going to take four and a half years to build that out. But I just find that really interesting. I mean, anybody can kind of do what they want to do uh, as, as, a, as, a, as a home builder, but that's kind of like a way that they're kind of like looking to just say with all this gobbledygook and such, they're already talking about just, hey, we're not going to do a registration list. We are, but we're not going to do a lottery. We're going to do a highest and best offer. We want highest and best offers. And it's like, they're just going to roll with it. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, I mean, these are interesting times when there's, when there's very little inventory and you're a builder and you hold the deck of cards. Um, you can, you can basically make up your own rules. And as long as there's enough buyers, you're going to be fine. Um, as long as rates stay low, as long as there's less low, really low inventory, they're going to continue to be able to do this. Um, it is very frustrating for a lot of buyers, but we have no options. Um, now, did this lead to a bubble back in the day? It led to, I think, a rapid increase in property values. But if anyone brings that up and tries to make a parallel, yes, there are some things that, that we're increasing rapidly on, but I think this is going to be a, um, we're taking all our appreciation up front, so to speak, for the next couple of years. And then I think it'll go pretty flat. I don't think it'll go back down because nobody's going to sell unless they can't afford it. Unless, unless jobs become an issue and our markets really are in a really bad recession, um, for employment and people lose their jobs. Um, there's a lot of money in the real estate market right now as far as equity goes. Um, and remember the loans that people are getting now are legitimate, they can qualify for them loans. You and I both know if you, if you were in this industry back in 2002, three, four, five, six, 
all of those subprime loans that were fixed for 3% for the first two years. And then they went up, but they had a three year prepay. So the prepayment was longer than their rate was fixed for. Once that adjusted to like eight or nine or 10, they couldn't afford it, but they couldn't sell refinance either because of the prepayment penalty and it was very expensive. So they foreclosed and that was the biggest debacle in the financial markets that we've ever seen. And that trickled into the homes, just flooding the market, which meant, guess what? Too many homes, not enough buyers. And then when everyone was zero down, stated income loans, and they're like, wait a minute, it's not appreciating at, appreciating at $20,000 a month anymore? Uh, okay, well, I guess the 10 properties that I bought stated income uh, was zero down. I just, I'll just let those go because now I don't have any equity. In them. And that's what triggered the massive bubble. Um, and the problem, because people were buying homes they couldn't afford. Now, everyone can afford it. And this is where I, this is what I'm seeing right now that ants, the ants basically are all coming from the big cities. They all have money. They're coming into our market and it's like buy one, get one free. They're like, oh my gosh, this is half price. Sure. I don't pay, I don't mind paying 80,000 or a hundred thousand dollars more on this $500,000 home. The same homes of 1.5 million back at home. So yeah, I'll pay that all day long. Once that settles down, reality is going to set in. And I honestly believe that the level of like LA, the value versus what Phoenix were, was, I think it's going to come up. We're going to bridge the gap a little bit. We're never going to be the same because that's just not, I don't socioeconomically feasible, I don't think. But I think we will bridge that gap a little bit because of what's happening right now. And we're going to have this big boost and then it's going to come back to normal. Um, but as long as there's more buyers than inventory, then we're going to continue to have appreciation as long as jobs stay strong, rates stay relatively low, anything below 4% is phenomenal, guys. We've just been very spoiled. Um, and we need to make sure our buyers understand that. Any other questions? It's crazy out there, guys. So um, if you need me for anything, uh, if you have any buyers that are on the fence, um, we have the uh, reports that I can create that are specific to zip code on the cost of waiting. If rates go up, what does that look like? Um, there's a lot of generic things that we can do, but that really that individualized method of what's the cost of truly waiting for one year. If, if appreciation goes up 7% this year and rates go up 1%, what will their buying power be like in one year? Um, that's really good information to show a buyer. So there's, they're customized. There's nothing um, that is generic because every zip code is a little bit different. Um, and every borrower has a little bit different fear. So we structure them a little bit differently. But if you need anything like that, let me know. I'd be happy to provide that for you. All right, guys, we're at about 30 minute mark, which is a little longer than what I like to take. So I appreciate your time today. Um, if there's anything you need, feel free to call me, shoot me a text, shoot me an email. Um, my team's here to serve. Thanks, guys. And we'll see you next Monday at 11. Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys. Bye.